Hi, my name is Alexa Khan. I'm a junior in the college and I'm studying biology and global health. Today I'm talking to you about Linum usatetissimum and it's known as flaxseed and it's a part of the Linaceae family. So just a brief overview, um, Linum usatetissimum is also known as flaxseed, flax, or linseed. It's been used throughout Europe, Asia, and Africa for many years. And in India and the UK, they common, it's commonly referred to as linseed, whereas in the United States and Canada, it's referred to as flaxseed. And flaxseeds are rich in alpha-linolenic acids. And the map at the bottom just shows where flax is more concentrated. And the picture at the top shows the whole flaxseed and then the powdered flaxseed forms. So for my botanical description, um, it's important to know that flax is highly adaptable and versatile. It's home to both warm and cool climates. Um, it has a shallow root system and it's an annual herbaceous plant. Um, the plant is generally short in height and it has a lot of secondary branches. Flax is a blue flowering crop and produces these small flat seeds, which you'll see when it gets to you. Um, it's in both brown form and golden form. And it's also important to note that the difference in color is generally aesthetic and it has no significant difference medicinally whether you choose to eat the brown ones or the golden ones. Um, Flax for fiber comes from stems that are generally 80 to 120 centimeters tall and the, those stems have fewer branches and then the flax that's used for oil comes from stems that are 60 to 80 centimeters tall and those stems have more dense branches. And also North Dakota is home to um, flax and it's the leader in the United States for the, its production with 95% of the region covered with flax. <laughs> so for the traditional uses, it was used in food for in Europe and Asia from, um, since 5000 to 8000 BCE. Specifically the flaxseed oil was really important to stir frying in Asia in many of the villages for their cooking. Um, in Greek and Egyptian cultures, they've used flax for its laxative properties. And in India, flax is really important to its textile industry. They used it in mattresses and bedding. And in, what's really interesting is that they use linseed oil, which is pressed from flaxseed oil, uh, from flax seeds, and it was used to make paints and coatings. And what they would do with this is, when they had wood or their artwork before selling it to the markets, they'd add this linseed oil over it to give it a nice shiny gloss for um, aesthetic reasons. So now I'm going to talk about the chemistry and pharmacology. Flaxseed is composed of 41% fat, 21% protein, and 28% dietary fiber. And then the oil is composed of 73% polyunsaturated fatty acids, 28% monounsaturated fatty acids, and 9% saturated fats saturated fatty acids, and this lends itself to be considered a um, low saturated fat food that's rich in omega-3 fatty acids. And it also has phytoestrogens or ligands, and that's most concentrated in the flax seed, and a rich source of ligands is this molecule <laughs> SDG, which you can see at the bottom of the slide, and then the molecule in the middle is alpha-linoleic acid. So many studies have been done with flaxseed to test its biological activity in vivo and in vitro. And many of the studies found that it had antioxidant activity, anti-carcinogenic activity. Um, it, was a, it was a good um, product for improving immune, system, improving immune system. So I'm just going to highlight some of the more important and interesting studies that I found. So for one of my in vivo studies, I found that animals that were fed 20% flax, 40% flax, or they were given a diet with no flax, they found that the, rat, the animals that were given flax had lower uh, serum total cholesterol than those that had a diet absent of flax. And they found that the SDG in the flax was responsible for uh, reducing atherosclerosis by 73%.
Another study with rats found that when they were given 7.5 grams per kilogram of flax that was added to an antioxidant free diet, they found that it had lower atherosclerosis in the aorta by 46% and it lowered the inflammatory leukocytes compared to a diet that was flax free. Other researchers found that the purified SDG form of flax was evaluated in the mammary, mammary colon, prostate, um, and diabetes rat, mo uh, rat models, and they found that those that were given flax had significantly smaller tumor sizes and progression of tumors. Oh, I actually have some. So for my last um, in vivo study, I found correlation between skin and hair conditions and the use of flax seeds in mo both monkeys and rats. And in the monkeys, it was shown that flax helped heal some of their skin lesions. And then in the Swi Swiss mice, I found that alpha linoleic acid content inhibited the progression of skin cancer development. And then for my in vitro study, I found a study that compared linseed oil versus soy oil and safflower oil. And they found that they looked at the peripheral blood lymphocytes that were cultured with T cell mitogens, and they found that the blood lymphocytes were noticeably higher in the group of rabbits that had uh, flaxseed as compared to the, uh, um, either the soy oil or the safflower oil. And they, researchers concluded that the immune system of the rats that were fed flaxseed was more responsive, and an increased immunoresponsiveness of these rabbits, was, rabbits were helpful in fighting future infections. So for my clinical studies, again, I found another study in humans that was done correlating the link between flaxseed oil and healthy skin in humans, and they saw that the flaxseed oil that was applied to the skin was helpful in treating psoriasis. Um, I also found a study that was done with elderly patients, and they, um, they gave elderly patients two flax brand muffins <laughs> daily, and they found that the elderly patients reported increased bowel movements and frequency of bowel movements. So the researchers suggested that flaxseed has some laxative properties. And then I also found a study that was done in Toronto that the SDG and alpha linoleic acid improved response to stress and ultimately protected patients against atherosclerosis, um, which is a thickening of the arteries. And researchers hypothesized that flax could have some vascular prop. Um, protection against vascular disease. So there are no major contraindications of flax. There um, is minimal risk with consuming flax. However, it's important to know that there is a possible allergy. So if you have previous allergies to seeds or nuts, you should definitely consult a doctor before consuming flax or adding it to your diet. But it's been used for many years, and it was a really big part of the Mediterranean diet. And they're generally viewed as having a healthy lifestyle. So many people consider uh, flax to be safe. There is some concern with consumption of raw flax seeds because that has a high content of cyanogenic glycosides, which we know is toxic to animals and humans. So that's just a caution. But when I was in the store, I asked, and she said that generally all the flax seeds that are sold in stores are cooked, so it's safe to use. And then some allopathic and camp therapies. It's been used in food um, in Asia, India, United States, and Canada for many years. And now it's a really big source of fiber. So those of people that are not meeting their fiber requirements, it's a good way a good way to add to your diet. You can, it's really good to put the flax seeds. People put in their yogurt, people put the powder in soup, and people use the flax seeds to make crackers, and they use it in pancakes, which is interesting. Um, it's been known for its cardiovascular health, so people that are looking to improve their cardiovascular health, it's a good idea to add these into your diet. Um, it has anti-carcinogenic properties, and like I said before, it's being more widely studied for skincare. If you look at your skincare products, a lot of products are really high in witch hazel, but now they're looking at using flaxseed as an flaxseed oil as an alternative. Um, it's found in the stores, <coughs> excuse me, in whole seeds, ground powder, or oil. 
Um, I also found something that was interesting that they're, they have something called flaxseed gum. And this is used as a mucilage. And what they do is the gum is extracted from hot and then cold water. And then it's mixed with ethanol and freeze dried. And then acid hydrolysis produces polysaccharides. And this is really important and, or it's useful in preserving bread and making the quality fresh. Um, and it increases the low volume of the bread. And then for some of my conclusions, um, flax doesn't have the generally regarded as safe label yet, but there is a no objection label, so many people view it as safe. There's minimal risk, and they encourage you to add it to your diet. Um, it's been used for many years in food, and it's used in linen um, making linen cloth. And it's healthful and nutritious source of food, and it's becoming more widely studied, and <laughs> it's becoming more popular in the diet in the United States today.